joining us online at the assembly. We believe in biblical teaching and preaching, and this message is designed to proclaim the hope of Jesus. So feel free to share this video with a friend or on your social media, and we would love to stay connected. So be sure to follow our channel. We hope this message encourages you today. Again, thank you so much for joining us online at the assembly. We hope this message encouraged you and we would love to stay connected. So be sure to click the link below and contact us. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday. We've been talking about his church, a healthy church. And uh, it's been actually really neat over the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was somebody that came here last week and they said, wow, I actually uh, just transitioned from a situation at a church that wasn't really healthy. And they said, I, I wanted to um, just come and, and, and kind of be refreshed and encouraged. And pastor was preaching on a healthy church. And we continue to hear stories about how God is, is speaking to all of our members. And so I want to challenge you today. I really believe that God has a word for you. Today, as we look at God's word, I think it's important that we know when it comes to his church, that we not only have to be healthy as a church body, but we have to be healthy as individuals. Because it is individuals that make up the body of Christ. It takes a team to win a football game. It's not just one person. It's not just two people. But it takes all players to make sure that that win happens. And so I believe it's the same way in the kingdom of God. And so today, I want to preach a message entitled, A Healthy Heart Doesn't Just Happen. A Healthy Heart Doesn't Just Happen happen. Today, as I preach from this idea, I want to, to, to get a picture in your mind for a moment. I want you to think about a marriage relationship, or I want you to think about a dating relationship, or I want you to think about a friendship. And I want you to realize that that will never be a stronger unit collectively than it is individually. For example, it takes, takes two, right, in a relationship. It takes two in a friendship. If one is healthy but the other one is struggling, we have to make sure that we're continuing to encourage and strengthen. Why? Because we will never be healthy collectively if we are not healthy individually. And so today, I believe in his church, God wants us to ask ourselves this question. How healthy would we be as his church at the Assembly in Siloam Springs if everyone was like you? Where, where would we be strong? Would we be a worshiping church? Would we be a clapping church? Would we be a church that sits and meditates during worship and reflects on God? Would we be a church that every time the doors are open, we're here and we are ready? Are, are we a church that comes in and is tired and weary? Are we a church that maybe comes in and has some faith, but not a lot of faith? If our church all together looked like our lives, like my life, what kind of church would we be? Because we will not be stronger collectively than we are individually. And today, as we talk about having a healthy heart, I want to share with you three thoughts or three things that I think could encourage you from God's word on how he calls his church to live, how he calls his church to be. At 14 years old, the last thing I was thinking about was having a healthy heart. At 14 years old, I was thinking about how I wanted that Hungry Man XXL dinner with a side of pizza rolls and a Diet Coke to cancel it out, you know? Come on, where are my Diet Coke lovers? Come on. Doesn't that cancel it out? It's diet, right? I don't know about that. I think somebody sold me a lie in the fourth grade. But um, I wasn't focused on living healthy at that age. Why? Because I thought, oh, well, healthy uh, living is for people that are old, right? That's for people that I'll worry about that one day. But at 14 years old, that was my mindset. And when I was younger, I was actually focused on other things. How do I fit in? How do I be cool? How do I do the most comfortable thing? When I was younger, I was focused on the wrong things. And in fact, today, there are still people who will sacrifice comfort in a good way good comfort, they will sacrifice that just to be cool. Uh, if there are students, um, I'm a student pastor, so I get to see it all the time. There are students that love to wear these shoes. They're called Air Forces, Air Force Ones. And if you've ever seen, uh, if you work in the school system, you might have seen this. I'm about to give you an epiphany. A student that 
they're walking like a penguin to get to their class. Why? Because I can't crease the forces. I can't crease the leather. If I crease it, man, I got to spend another $110. And that's a lot when you're 14 years old. That's a lot when you're 16. So you got to have that swag. You look like you're trying to have a healthy relationship when you're walking like a penguin. It's pretty funny. But I see people who I'm like, come on, at this age, I'm like, I don't care. I got Reeboks on. Uh, I, I don't care. I, I'll, I'll wear Brooks sometimes. Come on, if you want some good shoes. I'll wear some Asics sometimes. I want comfort. I don't want coolness. But still, there are people who today want to look the part on the outside. There are some who will sac sacrifice financial freedom from debt for the sake of image and a synthetic lifestyle. They'll say, oh, wait, wait till so-and-so sees what I have or sees what I'm doing. Then they'll know my life's really great. They'll know I went on a more expensive vacation. They'll know that I did something greater. Why? Because sometimes we want things on the outside to look so good. Yet, there's this truth in scripture that says God looks at our heart. He looks straight at the heart. Even through all the penguin, penguin waddling, he looks straight at our heart. And he knows what our heart's about. Who we're trying to be. What we're trying to become. And to be honest, many of us will walk through life half healthy, and half fulfilled because of this. That's what we call settling. And, and I don't believe God wants us to live lives that settle. To be honest, when I was younger, I wasn't always focused on what God wanted for my life. I was distracted. I had people around me that sometimes weren't the best of influences, and it caused me to sometimes want to settle on what God has called me to do. But I'm learning more and more at the age of 28, that being healthy is not for old people. It's for me. That's why there are some of you that constantly remind me, hey, you should come to the gym with me. <laughs> you should come be a part of the gym. See, church, we need that. We need that. Why? Because being healthy is for all of us. It's not just for a select few. Being healthy is something that I have to focus on. Why? Because if I'm going to honor God with my life, and if I'm going to live a life that gives him the greatest glory, then I have to make sure my heart's healthy in every season. And when you hear that today, I'm not just talking physical. Yes, it includes that, but I'm talking about spiritually. How's your heart? I can't, wait to, I can't afford to wait until I'm this or that. I have to look now. God asked me to change right now. In fact, Rob Ketterling, he says this. Rob Ketterling, a pastor, says, you can either change before you have to or change because you have to. I bet if you look over the course of your life, there are moments where you changed because you had to. Sometimes it was a job transition. You had to. Either there wasn't the budget for the company or maybe the work ethic just wasn't at the level that they had hoped or expected it would be. Maybe it wasn't a good fit, and that's a change because you have to. Sometimes things are inevitable. I want you to understand this. Sometimes things uh, change. Sometimes there is a rejection that God uses as a redirection for your life. Sometimes God is saving you from a situation that could be bad when you don't realize it because he's just that good. But sometimes there are things that we do in our lives, and if we don't change them, we will be called to have to change them. It's the moment that many of us wait for, and we sit in the doctor's office and they say, you have to make changes. Yet for so many years, sometimes we establish these patterns that are comfortable for us. We don't think about it when we're young, but then we get older and we realize, no, 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 if I'm going to have the fullest life that I can, I have to make some changes. So today, I want today to be an encouraging word. I want to be a strengthening word for you. And I want today to be a word where you say, you know what? I want to make the decision today to make sure I'm a healthy individual. That I want to make sure I'm healthy in every area and in every sense of my life. I want to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to read one proverb today. So would you, I know we're, we're, we're comfortable now. That was just the introduction. It's going to be a good morning. <laughs> I want you to read this proverb. And, and today, I want you to read it aloud with me. We'll probably read it aloud a couple times. Come on, let's say Proverbs 4.23 together. Say it with me. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. 
I, I want to say this one more time. This is wisdom right here. Let's say it together. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Can we pray? Lord, I pray today. There are so many hearts represented in this room. God, there are people today here that their heart is healthy and they're doing great. There are some of us that had as many shots of espresso as I did, Lord, and they are excited today. There are some of us that are heavy hearted today. There are some of us in so many different conditions of their lives. And I pray today that you would speak right to the heart of your people. Lord, I thank you that you do put breath in our lungs. You are the one we praise today. And so I pray today, God, that you would speak to me. That each person in this room would leave here knowing what it means to have a heart that's healthy and a heart that's for you. Lord, I pray today for anyone who maybe needs to be healed or anybody uh, today who needs to experience you in a, in a great way. God, you're here, and so anything is possible. Use me today to speak the anointed word of God. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. You can be seated today. The first thought that I have for you, I want to I share why. Why, ab above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Well, that's one reason why. Everything you do flows from it. Why should we guard our heart? Because everything that you do flows from it. You ever uh, been in a situation where somebody said something and then they say, I'm just kidding, but you're thinking, no, 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 that's how you really feel. That's why you said that. Come on. Sometimes we're short, sometimes we do that, and I've learned this in relationship. The closer you are to someone, sometimes the harder you can cut them, the deeper that you can hurt them, because you just feel like you can say whatever and do whatever. And so sometimes it's tough in life whenever we realize that the things we say are not just things that are passing thoughts, but sometimes if we believe God's word, it's because our heart has gotten to the point where it started to fill up and now it flows out of us. It flows through us. We've let it fester. We've let it stay within us. And so it ends up hurting us inside to the point that we say, I've got to get it out. And instead of doing it healthily, maybe through prayer, through supplication, maybe through praying for that person and realizing that they're not perfect either and that they're going to fail you, but God is still good. Without doing that, we can sometimes end up saying things that hurt, that pierce, and they hurt, they hurt people. So why in the world, why in the world we want to guard our heart today? It's because everything you do flows from it. A healthy heart doesn't just happen, we have to protect our heart. Matthew 5, 8 says this, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Today I want to encourage you to take notes, um, I just want to let you know today, you'll notice your insert is not the same notes as what we're preaching today, and that's because uh, Pastor Gary was prepared to preach today, and so today is a different message, but I encourage you to take some notes, because I believe today as we read these verses, they're just going to encourage you. Matthew 5, 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Today in our world, how many of you admit it's sometimes hard to see God moving? It's hard to see him working, right? I mean, come on, let's be real. Sometimes you look up, maybe if you turn on the news, maybe you just go outside, go to, go to a coffee shop, you go somewhere and you go, wow, where's God working in this situation? Like, you know, and it, it, it sometimes, we prayed it this morning in, in prayer. I believe that in the, the days when the church is, is, has a great opportunity to be so bright, why? It's because... The world around us is getting darker and darker and darker. And the church gets the moment, the opportunity to shine bright because we have Jesus in us. And so as I, as I look at this verse, it tells me something. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you want to see God at work, we have to have a pure heart. A pure heart. We'll read a verse a little later from Timothy that talks about a pure heart. That's the kind of heart God wants you to have today when we talk about a healthy heart. But I believe it starts first here with this. The first thought today is a healthy heart is a healed heart. A healthy heart is a healed heart. As I said earlier, in our fallen world, there are moments that we say things or things are said to us that scar us. Sometimes they hurt us. And healing, it takes time. It's not easy, but it's necessary. 
If you've ever been through a surgery, you know you don't just always come out of, depending on the severity of the surgery, you don't just come out of it so easily and everything's smooth and everything's great. Sometimes it takes weeks or months or even years to heal from some of the things that we endure. Healing takes time, and I want to say this, it's not easy, but it's necessary. And if you don't, I really believe this, you have to heal from people who hurt you or you'll bleed on people who never cut you. You have to make sure that you've spent time in God's presence and you've allowed your heart to be healed from situations where other people who have been hurt by other people have sometimes hurt you. It's blood on you and now you realize that there's problems in your heart and in your life because of what they did or what they said. For many of us, there may be some of us that have father wounds, mother wounds, friend wounds, maybe pastor wounds because they're human too. Maybe there are some of us that have been at times hurt by humans, things that were said to you, things you saw, things you heard, some things that were unintentional sometimes, and they're the result of our fallen, broken world. And so how much more do we need the Lord? I want to say this today, just because people are imperfect does not mean God is. We, we were just talking about this. We were singing about it. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways to us. And if we believe that, and we know that we as humans are sinful, and we know that Jesus is the only one who lived a sinless life, then we can have hope in him. We can have hope that he is the one who's able to mend and help our hurting hearts today. We can't allow the things that we experienced on this side of heaven to mar the way we see our God in heaven. Someone once told me, like a good surgeon, sometimes God will cut you to heal you. What does that mean? It means that sometimes God, like a good surgeon, will go in and say, this situation is to build your faith. The fact that God allows Job. He gives permission to the enemy to, yes, you can, you can test Job to this point, but then no more. It tells me that God is a good surgeon and he knows what he's doing and he's sometimes going to allow us to walk through things that are tough. But guess what? He has a bigger plan. I mean, think about for you, some of us in the room have gone through surgeries. Let's say you were playing baseball. I had a friend who was playing baseball um, a few months ago, and he broke his ankle, sliding into second. Uh, his whole body came up, and it didn't stop going over, and it snapped. Some of you are like, ugh. <laughs> You're like, I can't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> and he goes over, it snaps. What if he would have said, nah, we don't have to do the surgery? It's fine. It'll just fix itself. Yet how many of us today do that with our lives? It'll fix itself. It'll just, it'll work out. They'll, they'll move on or something. I won't have to see them again. I just won't plan any more hangouts with them. Maybe I can just, I got an idea. Let's just not hang out with them Friday. Let's cancel on them and lie and tell them it's a different reason. God will understand. All the while, God looks at our heart. And he says, man, I, I have something good for you. I'm like a good surgeon, and sometimes you'll go through things, and you will go, what is this for, Lord? But you have to trust the process that God has a good outcome for it. Why? Because John 10.10 10 says this. It says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. We have to understand the heaviness of that verse. That verse is not just talking about, oh, he, he wants to take from you, but there is a thief who wants to steal your eternal destiny. There is a thief that wants to come in and creep in and get you distracted and undirected. Why? He wants, he wants things to happen to you, the thief does, that hurt you, that cause you to feel like you can't be healed and you can't forgive and you can't move past. Why? Because there is a chance then that he can kill your eternal destiny with God and you will be with him in his trickery forever and that is not today what God's designed for us why because the second part of the verse says but I have come this is Jesus saying I have come that they may have life and have it to the full 
We're talking today about having the full amount of life. And in order to have the full amount of life, you have to have a healthy heart. I don't know today what may have happened to you. And I'm, I, I want to tell you today, if something bad happened, it was not okay. But God can heal your heart from it. He's done it for me. Maybe even right now you're unsure of trusting God with something in your life. Because you feel cut open. And it hurts. It feels like you're still laying on the table of surgery. And you woke up through the anesthesia. And you're saying, what's going on? I want you to know that you can trust the Lord. I know that you may be tired, you may be weary, but there is hope today. God will bring something good out of this as you trust him. For all the music lovers out there and the worship team, you guys can jot this down. One of my favorite songs right now is called Joy in the Morning by Elevation Worship. Joy in the Morning by Elevation Worship. And, and, and in it, there's this bridge that says, if it's not good, then he's not done. He's not done with it yet. If it's not good, then he's not done. He's not done with it yet. There's this promise in God's word that says that God works for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So today, on your journey of following the Lord, if you know that you are called of God and you're walking in that calling, if you know that you're trusting him with your day today and you're walking through something tough, you can know that with God, he's working it for your good and for his glory. You can know that. I'll say today, others' words may be stronger than your words, but God's words are stronger than all words. So we have to hear his words. We have to hear what he says about us. We have to sit in his presence so he can help us and so he can heal us. And it's as simple as taking time to open up God's word. Lately uh, has been just a, a season of a, an interesting season for me of spiritual attack, and I, as I've been walking through life, and I've been reading the Psalms. It's incredible how I'm like, I can just read this and it can pray for me. <laughs> when you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit knows what you ought to pray. And I'm reading the Word of God, and I'm like, this is what I need today. Hear me, Lord, answer me, for I'm poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call on you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. There are some of us that walk through situations, and your healing looks like that. It looks like taking time to remember that God is faithful, and he's true, and that he helps you. For some of us, it may look like talking to someone else about what you're walking through, who's a believer and who understands the precepts of God's word and that he is faithful, but also sometimes there are physical things that we need to do to be healthy. And that just like the Lord said, you need to get up and you need to just eat. You need to get down and you need to go to sleep. You need rest. Just as he commanded his people in the word of God to do that, you need that for your life. A healthy heart is a healed heart. And the promise of Jeremiah 37 is so true for you today. It says this, verse 17 actually, it says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. Understand this, when people were talking, talking bad about the people of God, when they, when they laughed and mocked and joked, you have to understand that God said, no, 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 you can trust in me because I'm going to restore your health. I'm going to bind up your wounds. Do you know when we hear the gospel that that's what it does? That God has sent me, God has sent us as messengers of the gospel. That God has sent you to proclaim the truth and the hope that's found in Jesus. That's what heals Today, some of us need to have a heart that is healed. And you're going to have a moment to have that as we pray. The second idea I have today is a, hum a healthy heart is a humble heart. A healthy heart is a humble heart. Humility. Humility. That's something some of us know really well. 
With some of us, it's tough. For some of us, it's a quick definition. I, I, I come back to this one all the time. I love it. C.S. Lewis says, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Understand this. Humility is not saying, I'm not good. I'm awful at everything. God's good, but I'm awful. No, no, no. That's not humility. Humility is being confident. God confident. This morning, someone came up to me and said, I just want you to know that I believe in God in you because Christ in you is enough. That's God's word for me today. God, you in me, Christ in us, the hope of the world. It's Christ, but in us. Christ is the hope of the world in us, and his name will be the hope of all the world. But in us, he will use us if we have a humble heart. God made you to be a great person, but listen, you have to understand that God's the one who made you. So your awesome qualities, your awesome qualities, the pictures that you take photos of, those awesome qualities, those are the Lord. He has made you and he has created you, but have you ever met somebody who wants to always be better than you? <laughs> they always try to one-up you. There are two types of people in life, I believe. There are probably many more than that. But there are two that I'll point out today. There are those who say, here I am. Come on, we know those. They, they come to work, here I am. I'm here. Why aren't you clapping? I'm here. And then there are those that say, there you are. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm grateful Pastor Gary is a there you are kind of pastor. I'm grateful that our church is a there you are kind of church. I'm grateful that in the community that we have that face, that we share that love, that we're that kind of people, that we're people that we're humble knowing God is helping us make impact, God is helping us do ministry, but it's not for us that we are humble and we say, God, we just want, if we're going to say, here I am, the only one we're going to say, here I am to is the Lord. Lord, here I am. But to everyone else, there you are. I today want us to think about the idea of a humble heart and, and listen to what another proverb 27 2 says it says you know the bible speaks about this the here i am there you are kind of mindset it says let someone else praise you and not your own mouth an outsider and not your own lips man come on let's check our, our humility pulse today i want to read matthew 6. Matthew 6 is where Jesus is teaching. And as he's teaching, he says this. He's, he's first going to teach them on giving. And he says in verse 1, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others, truly I tell you, they've received their reward in full. Man, if you look for the applause of others, if you look for the praise of other people, you better enjoy it because that's all you're gonna get. Truly I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. <laughs> We're going to start giving in our offering with our hand under our, <laughs> under our leg. We don't, we don't want this one to know. We, that, how do we do that? That is how blameless we ought to be as we give. Why? So that your giving may be done in secret. And then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. We live for his applause. He'll look at us and he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Jesus continues in that passage and teaching them to pray. He says, and when you pray, also don't be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who's unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. 
It's the kind of life I want to live. A life that humbly knows God sees me. And I'm not worried about if other people see me. I want them to see, if they see me, I want them to see Jesus in me. That's it. James 4.10. James 4.10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord. And he will lift you up in honor. In honor. Today, I challenge us to be humble people. But today, I think if we were healed from things, and I think if we were humble, I would be pretty good. But today, I want to be fully healthy. So the third idea I have today is this. A healthy heart is a holy heart. A healthy heart is a holy heart. Often when we hear the word holy, sometimes I think about my days when I was younger, grew up Church of Christ, and to be holy when I was younger, it meant I did communion every day. I made sure I tackled any girl that tried to come up to the front of the church <laughs> and speak or grab a mic, because that's what I thought, you know. I don't believe that now, but that's what I thought. Holiness to me looked like buying a pair of jeans, so I waited six months to go on Sunday because I wanted to be sure I had a pair of jeans the first time I went, and lo and behold, I came in and you guys were wearing jeans. It looked interesting to me when I was younger. Holiness looks like some of those things to me, and I would grow up and learn that some of that I got confused with just being holy was got mixed up with being religious or looking the part. And I remind you, God looks at your heart today. And so he, he looks at us and he says, I want you to, to look not like this or like that. I want you to look like Jesus. I want you to look like Jesus. Wouldn't it be really bad if we went to a doctor's appointment? And let's say maybe me and Kaysen went into that doctor appointment together. And they said, well, compared to Kaysen, Brandon, you're doing pretty good. So you don't have to change anything. You don't have to work on anything. Why? Because compared to Kaysen, you're doing pretty good. In fact, it'd probably be the other way around. <laughs> you know? So what time are workouts? <laughs> And so, sometimes we think with our walk with God, we can do the comparison, but we would never want to walk into any doctor's office and say, ah, just, how am I doing compared to the rest of the people you've seen today? Come on, I'm just, no, 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 God looks right at us, and he says, hey, how are you doing? I want to care for you. I want to look at you. I want to make you holy. That's what God calls us to do, is to sit with him and do that. Often when we hear holy, sometimes we think that is so eons, light years beyond where we are. So why try? God is holy. I'm imperfect. I'll stay in my corner of the, the, this, this corner over here and I'll let God do his thing. When God's called us to draw close to him and be like him. Not to just, ah, I'll never get there. But I've learned something about holiness. Slow and steady wins the race. When it comes to holiness and being holy and being like Jesus, we're not talking about being perfect. Can I share a funny story with you? There once was a farmer. After getting settled in the new town, the farmer went to church for the first time. He found that the people in the church gossiped and shunned him for his poor appearance. After the service, the preacher went to the farmer and told him, In this town, we get dressed up for church. But I'm a humble farmer with no better clothes than these. What shall I do? Pray to God, the preacher replied. He will tell you what to do. The next week, the farmer comes back to church wearing different clothes. But they were no better than the other set of clothes he had on, just a different color. The preacher interrupted the service to berate the farmer. Didn't I tell you to ask God what to wear to come here? Yes, sir, you did. And did you do that? Yes, sir, I did, he said. And what did God tell you to wear? Well, to be honest, Father, he didn't know. He said he's never been in this church before. <laughs> Oof! That'll give you a heart attack. <laughs> 
Man, that's tough. Come on, let's be real. Some of us have had moments like that. A holy church, even a healthy church, doesn't mean a perfect church, but listen, we just want to be a place and a people of God where we can bring God the greatest glory with our lives. We want to be the place that says, I'm going to throw off living carelessly. I'm going to throw off living flippantly. I'm going to throw off living like everyone else kind of believes this stuff, but I don't really. No, no, no. I'm not going to live that way. 2 Timothy 2.22 is a message from Paul to Timothy. And I don't think it expires as Timothy gets older. It says this, it says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. It doesn't say for a pure heart, it says from a pure heart. The character, the ingredients, if you will, of a person who desires to be holy is one that pursues righteousness faith, love, and peace. There was a time when I was younger, and I said, I wrote this in a journal. I said, it is no longer enough for me to stay away from sin, but I must pursue righteousness. And then a little while later, I read that in the Bible. I was like, that was a word from God. He spoke that to me. Don't strive to fit in when God's called you to stand out at your school, at your workplace. Don't do average. Don't settle. Because God's called you to be holy. You've decided to follow Jesus. You can't please God by following your own flesh and personal desires. I'll say it this way. You cannot consistently live in a way that is inconsistent with who you are. So who are you today? Who are you today? Who are you? Who am I, Lord? See my heart today. If I say I'm a Christian, God, you, you look at me. You are the good judge. The one who looks at my heart and tells me how I'm doing. To be holy is to be like Jesus. And so my last thought is how. I get it. How, though? Well, Psalm 1. I had to memorize this whenever I was in the private Christian school I grew up in. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, it says this. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. Come on, say day and night. Say day and night. Day and night. Many of us think, well, I'm a farmer. I've got a job. I can't just meditate on this book. I ain't the pastor. No, no, no. It didn't say you had to read every second of the day. It said you had to meditate. Think on. Think about it. Wake up. Read a little bit. Go to work. Think about it. Meditate on God's word day and night. Because why? He's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Some of us are on the verge of changing our business for the Lord. Some of us are on the verge of changing something in our family for the Lord. And we so desperately want to live a life that whatever we do prospers. This is how to do it. Meditate on the word of God day and night. Put it into practice. Live a holy life. Today, I challenge us to be a church that's healthy. To be a, a healthy church means this. If God wants his church to be healthy and we are part of his church, we have to be healthy. If God has called his church to be healthy and you're part of his church, then you got to be healthy. And so today, you may need healing because we can't just go, okay, it's a broken ankle. We're not going to fix it. We just cover it up, put a Band-Aid on it, still walk with a limp for the rest of our life. 
God hasn't called us to that. That's settling. No, no, no. God's called us to something greater. We've got to heal some of us today. Some of us today say, I, I, think, I'm, I think I'm good on healing. <laughs> well, perfect. The next point's for you. Humility. <laughs> Be humble. <laughs> I'm just being kind of funny. But, but no, seriously, some of us today really honestly need to that part of us that wants to be prideful or wants to say, no, I think I'm good. No, 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 I always want to just, God, what, what do you, what do you want? When I sit and it's me and you in that, in that doctor's office, not looking at someone beside me, they may be healthy. How am I? Am I humble? Am I allowing you to be exalted? Or am I trying to do this thing myself? Because when I trust you, whatever I do prospers, but when I do it my way, I've seen it fail. It may work for a little while. I just pray that right now, if God's calling somebody to do something great for him, that you would trust him more than your innovation, more than your ability, more than your figuring it out. Why? Because I just really, I've seen God bring so much fruit when you've just submitted plans to him and trusted him with it. We are sitting in a promise of God. We are sitting in a trust of God right today. We are going to celebrate a hundred years in a few weeks because of the Lord. Because we couldn't have done this without Him. We want to stay humble and remind ourselves this is His. And it is our goal as a church, it is our goal as individuals to be holy to make sure that when we walk out of these doors that we do everything we can to give God the greatest glory with our lives. Come on, if that's your prayer today, I wanna ask you to just stand up today and say, that's the kind of life I wanna live. I wanna live a life that makes a difference whenever I walk out of here. I know there are some in the room that say, I, I, wanna, I wanna live that way. So I wanna invite you to stand with me today as we take a moment and we invite our prayer team to come down because I believe we are people that should live that way. And I believe that God calls us to live that way. He calls us to live lives where we are not settling, but we're giving every part of ourselves for His glory. As I've been praying and as I've been preparing this morning, I really have sensed in my heart there are people who God is going to do great things through. And they're, right, they're in here right now, today. I just want you to be obedient to what it is God's saying to you. I want you to be obedient to what God is speaking to your heart. Maybe today you need to pray with somebody. And today we want to give you that opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. And so our prayer team is down here, and in just a moment, we're going to have another time of worship. And whether you need a healing, physical or something emotional, God's here, and anything is possible. Miracles, they can happen. And I declare in this house, this is a house of miracles, Lord. You can move supernaturally in here because, Jesus, you're here.